who won Big East titles and won national championships, the Hall of Famer, the UConn legend, Jim Calhoun, joining us. And Jim, it's great to have you with us as the UConn Huskies make their return to the Big East tournament at Madison Square Garden this week. What comes to mind for you? Excitement, uh, Fantasy Island, uh, uh, thousands and thousands of fans outside the garden, uh, the subways coming in, uh, Ray Allen and Rip Hamilton and all the other great players we had, and Iverson and Alonzo and Terry Kittles and you name it, all the great players in the league. And, uh, yeah, excitement. Uh, honestly, it's a special week for fans, special week for uh, players. And, you know, it's not going to be, quote, quite the same. It's still a Big East tournament. It's still Madison Square Garden. A couple of anniversaries this year, Jim. 25 years to the Allen versus Allen game between Ray Allen, Allen Iverson, and there's certainly a number of other pros on the floor that night when you meet John Thompson for a Big East championship. Uh, tell me about that day, waking up that day, what you think about how that day went into the night. Well, you know, when you get into the tournament, as you well know and can imagine, you can't really be thinking too far ahead or at all behind. <laughs> and so – you know, you, you know what you have to do against Allen. I mean, he's going to penetrate, you know, five, six feet maybe, 155, 60 pounds of dynamite, one of the great players of all time, but a matter of fact, and a game changer gear-wise and otherwise in his game. But, I, but I, I think we knew we had a pretty special player in Ray. We had a really good team. You know, if you look back on it, I think there were like eight guys who played at least four years in the NBA between the two teams. Amazing. And I very simply think that's, that's the Big East I remember. But quite frankly, get up in the morning, shoot around, you know, you know butterflies in the stomach starting, um, a little sweat in the hands when you're looking over a couple of different things. But generally speaking, get ready, try to do what we do, and stop them doing what they do best. And at that time, Allen versus Allen was a pretty good matchup. And uh, I still remember the, the theme song they had at uh, – uh, for the Big East, and it was pretty special. But it was a special night for basketball fans and ended up being a, a classic game. Jim, give me your best Ray Allen story. Well, Ray was, came, you know, as a, as a dunker. I saw him get 62 points playing for a team out of Virginia, AAU. He's from South Carolina. Or really all of the world's family was the Air Force, you know, London, Arkansas, California, et cetera. But, but he came as a dunker. And I kidly said Ray was a handsome kid. Loved being on campus, good student, bright, talked to everybody. And I said, Ray, you know, I know you like, uh, I know you like uh, the ladies on campus. And I said, no, let's, let's not go crazy on it. But, you know, everybody loves a scorer. <laughs> and the way the game's being played now, three points could come in. And he laughed and kidded about it. And then I saw him the next day working like crazy on his three-point shooting. A true, kind of true story. Kind of funny. He's a kid, young guy, et cetera. Well, he goes on to the Hall of Fame, obviously one of the great shooters of all time in college basketball and the NBA. And I, and I just think the funny story was not if you gave Ray a task, then you gave it to him. It wasn't like you thought, like, I lent it to him. I, no, you gave it to him. And he was damn sure that everybody around him, he was going to become the best at that. He became, obviously, a phenomenal shooter and a tremendous basketball player a Hall of Fame. What did you do in 96 after you won the Big East Championship over Georgetown that night? Yeah, I think, well, you know, we, we, my wife and I have great jokes about the fact that sometimes when you bring a trophy back to your room, <laughs> that you end up being Bill Murray, who I've been fortunate to play golf with a few times, by the way, and same character, you know. And, uh, and, and, and like any good Groundhog Day, you get up in the middle of the night and, you know, it's been – tumultuous getting there it's been worries and all different things and on your bureau it's a trophy yeah, it's a championship big east trophy which is very important to me and our team and look at it and you say it's still there <laughs> two hours later it's still there and i think that kind of stuff uh, made it great you know what really made it great uh, john our fans you know they had been begging and begging for us to be part of the action and all of a sudden we were starting to become more than part of the action we're becoming one of the people that you had to beat in our league. And, I, and I, I truly believe that when I saw the faces of the people and maybe in the hotel the lounge or walking the streets or getting on the bus and people coming on the bus and 
all that stuff is special. And I, I, you know, I almost can't describe kind of how special it was because our fans, you know, we're I mean, next door to us is, is New York and Connecticut. And there's a great, great at times resentment that we don't get a piece of the action, but we had started to it. Those nights were, were so special. And people would come up to you and cry in, might've been up to three or four in the morning, had to get up for a press conference at like nine or something. The bottom line is, you know, I, those memories, I'm, I'm guarantee you one thing, they'll never go away. They were special for our fans, for our state. And being around, and I've said this before, there's no greater place. And that's being around Madison Square Garden, the city, and just how it vibrated, even more special on the nights of the Big East Tournament. What is the state like right now with UConn basketball? I think they're, I think they're – it's a hard thing to say because I can't judge how other people think. I look at it a different way, you know. I look at it, are we, do we take care of the ball enough? Do we fast break enough? I know we defend, I know we rebound. But I look at it maybe technically a little more. Uh, but with all that said, I think the state is optimistic. They, 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 they aren't grabbing the straws because we probably are going in the most talented team. We've been talented all year. We just had a couple of injuries like everybody else. We had the pandemic, and I keep telling everybody in Connecticut, oh, by the way, I hate to tell you, Stewart's Connecticut is not the only place with a pandemic, so shutdowns happen every place. I, I used to coach at St. Joseph's. We shut down for three weeks. We shut down for two weeks. All, you know, we've played like five games now. My point being, my point being to this is, is, is that we have size. Uh, I know Danny wants to say we're young. We're not young. Pauly, Whaley, Carlton, Adams, uh, Martin, you know, I mean, those players are all juniors and seniors. We're one of the older teams in many ways. Santiago's a rookie and been great for us. But I, I, I think you know the point I'm making. We're big, we're strong, and we have a great player. You know, that generally speaking to success in a tournament, because if a big kid gets taken out, we put another one in there. Oh, by the way, if he gets a little bit of trouble not playing well, we put another one in there. And you took all those six foot nine guys to go with a, a, a Cole who's coming on. And certainly, uh, Book Knight, who's the most talented kid in the league. I mean, we can make all the things we want. Is he player of the year? I don't know if he played enough games. I'm not worried about that. I'm more concerned. He's a terrific, terrific player who's an incredible athlete. And I think he's going to play well at the next level because he has a lot of the components. But I think we're the most talented team going in. Let's stick with Book Knight. What stands out to you the most about him? Athletic. You see, a lot, a lot of guys can do things. They just can't think, do things. You know, we have a young kid, Jackson, who's a really good athlete, but that's what he is right now. I mean, Tony said, well, he's going to be a pro. Calm down. He, he, he's averaging three points a game. Okay? Now, I love him, but he's a terrific, terrific athlete. Well, take him athletically and put it into a basketball IQ and a basketball player who's got touch. That's Book Knight. Book Knight is a pro-typical NBA two guard who can pass, jump, shoot. The other things I don't know about, you know, once again, uh, uh, Danny's coaching him and, uh, all, and, and all that good stuff. But, 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 but I truly believe that, that he's got the components to be a 10 year, you know, pro. Is he going to be Ray Allen? Uh, you're asking an awful lot. Rip Hamilton, Ben Gordon, you know, I hope so for his sake because those guys had great careers. But, but, but he's a, you know, you look around the league and, and you and I have talked about this before. You know, someone said, you play against all league? No, we play against Hall of Famers. I mean, if you think about it, the greatest rebounder that I ever coached against was Derek Coleman, and the records will show he was. You go through all the components, you line up against, as I told you, six out of the nine guys who, who started the league when I joined, you know, five, six years after its inception, are in the Hall of Fame. I didn't say, like, they're all conference, They're Hall of Fame coaches. You start looking at players one by one going in, and we have Hall of Fame players. And then you have a whole bunch of guys like Rip and the Kerry Kittles of the world, et cetera, et cetera, who are right on the edge. Karan Butler would have been a Hall of Famer, in my opinion, if he hadn't got hurt. Or played maybe more with the right teams. Rookie of the year, um, I'm not going before. I, I don't think people, and I think you know this, John, truly realize what it was like to walk on that minefield in Madison Square Garden. We were really good, by the way. Guess what? So wasn't everybody else. You know, in 2011, I go back to that. Yep. We only had 11 teams, I think, make it to the uh, NCAA tournament. Yeah. So they talk about how powerful the Big Ten is now. And far and away, it's the most powerful conference in America. 
far and away. That reminds me, honestly, so much, so much of the Big East back in the day. Not that the Big East is not good now. It's probably in the top five, six conferences in America. Is it top up there? I, I don't know that. And when you're talking about the Big Ten, you can make a case probably down to Indiana, and that's 10 in. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you can do that in the Big East. But I can tell you what, there's a lot of really good coaches. Uh, Jay Wright, obviously Danny, uh, Creighton. I mean, you go right to the list. We have, we have a lot. We don't have as many, quote, name coaches. A name. You think about this. And this is kind of, I know, getting back to people who love the history of the Big East. You didn't have to say anything more than Rolly. Okay. Behan, never the first name. I love Jim, but <laughs> PJ. Think about it. You, you said first names, John. You know, you know who I'm talking about. I don't know if you do that right now. Not that you won't, and not that it's going to come, but really be after, after, and it's really good coach now, Lee. After kind of Jay is a nationally known uh, brand name. Yeah, Danny maybe certainly moving up, not maybe, moving up. But those other guys, Final Four is all Americans. I mean, there's a pretty good litany there. Now, it does not take away anything from the Big East. Trust me. I would think, and once again, my prejudice, 26 years in the Big East, Gabe Gabbard being my mentor, God rest his soul, one of the great men of all time, stepping onto that stage is magical. And even now with less fans, it'll only be semi-magical. Well, semi-magical is pretty special. And my point being, I think that, that I, I, I think our addition back, and I'm prejudiced, obviously, to the, to the Big East, going to help the league, really going to help us. And, uh, I, I, you know, and, and, and some of the young coaches are really, really good, and the programs are really, really good. I, I, I just think that I'm not telling you that we're, we're down. We're not down. But, but you couldn't be up in that era when 11 teams go to the tournament. That means when you're playing the 11th place team. Oh, by the way, they're going to the tournament. I, I, like, I look at the league now. I don't think our 10th place team is going to the tournament or nine. My point being is that's when, you know, that's when all the days of wine and roses. I mean, it was beautiful. It was magical, as I said. Yet it still is still there. I said one of the great things about the Big East it's a battle in your own neighborhood, which are always the best kind. And that neighborhood gets renewed this week. Do you remember the wins or the losses more? Well, I'm smart enough, I think, uh, or maybe we moved it from a little bit. The, the, the bit of losses of Christian Leighton's shot on our, would have been our first trip in 99 to go to the final four. Then you're not going to forget that. Uh, but the wins are so wonderful. And, and you know, we were in the period of 1999 to, I'm sorry, 1989, 90. Won the Big East. Yeah. Finally, and didn't get to the final four over the next eight years. And we were criticized, obviously, for all we did was, you know, there's a year, there's a period of time, I just kind of remember, in the mid 90s, Daron Sheffer, Ray Allen, Travis Knight, et cetera. We were only 49, okay? And five in the league over a three-year period. Now, you all talk about, they got a great record. They're, I mean, they were in the league. They were 13 and four, really. Uh, we lost five games in three years and, and, and won 49. And, and I'm not saying egotistically. I'm saying, do you know how magical that was? And, and especially in my incredible respect for, for John, God rest his soul, to Roley, to Louie, to the incredible coaches, and by the way, fans. You know, we get out putting regionals in case. We get pepper in a regional. In Syracuse, I remember, uh, and, and played the final eight game up there against Maryland, and the fans were fabulous. You know, these are basketball fans. This, once again, you can probably see it oozing out of my, my pores. It's a special time. The bus rides, Route 95, up to, from Source, Connecticut, into Madison Square Garden. I think all of us got those, you know, great feelings in the stomach. This is a chance we can do something on the biggest stage, basketball-wise, in the country. And I, and I would say that to every young kid, every coach that's heading there, whoever, maybe uh, stop to hear some words of other people, treasure it. Because the memories, and I remember, you know, winning big games and taking the kids out to eat afterwards, depending upon the time. Or sometimes winning at 11, 30, 12 o'clock in the morning and getting ready for the next day. And, and I, I love that. I, I, I don't know if those 
sometimes and we were very fortunate to make a lot of finals and semifinals, et cetera. We very simply were, we made some good marches in there. My family, all the people that we knew, they loved going them. And, and, and I think uh, you're young enough, but, but, but probably mature about, enough about the league that you know the history of what this tournament can, has, and will mean going forward. We got a chance to, once again, the league, to go back to being the best conference in America. I'm not so sure all that far off it now. I, after the Big Ten, I think the rest was kind of sitting doing this kind of thing. I'm not sure that the ACC is as good as us right now. Maybe, maybe toss up. You know, when you and I could both say, right, the Big 12 and, and, and certainly the Big Ten. Yeah, Big Ten. But otherwise, we're, we're kind of nice. But, but once again, there's some terrific players on our league and the more good players we get, the more excellent coaches which we have and get known. It's a special week to, to kind of make a name for, for yourself, for your school. And, and reestablish just how special the Big East is. And obviously, as I said, prejudiced I may be, I'm very honest. If I start reading off Hall of Famers, I don't mean all comments, guys. <laughs> I'm talking uh, all league players in, in, in the NBA, guys who games that, that, that are, I can still see uh, us making a shot by Ray and coming down. And Allen had the, you know, the whole thing. And obviously, had this shot and that shot tipped off. And then Ray running 100 miles an hour. He's so excited, knocking our manager, a gal, over by mistake. You know what I'm saying? Running on the court. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and that stuff, to be honest with you, uh, it was never forgotten. And I think that if you talk to Ray, Rip, Ben, Mech, Kimba, we even talked to, imagine with this deep and I haven't talked about Kimba. And, and I, I'm saying to you, people, will stop me on the street in the city, stop me a lot of place and, and ask about some of those things because they really, am I being biased? Probably, but wasn't, and, and still has a chance to be a special time for basketball. I think it was. I think like the Southeast Conference with its juggernauts of Alabama, Florida, all that kind of stuff, that's who we were in basketball. And, and, and you know, and, and then nobody really wanted to fight us because you couldn't on the players we had, the games we had, and the programs we had. Give me the comparison feeling for you. When you know that you're going to play a Big East tournament first round game on the, the play-in night, Jim, in 2011, that feeling to on day two, you know, now you're beating Pittsburgh and doing it on a Kemba game winner. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I think it's a lot to that. But I very simply, it's going to sound strange to you. I always thought we'd play poorly if we sat out a game or two. So you begin on a Thursday, I'll play a play-in game. I know it sounds crazy to you. I thought it was two different ways because I, I, I believe in my kids and believe in our program that we, I, I, in some ways, in many ways, I'd rather be playing than waiting. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds strange, but, you know, that year I, I look like I'm being smart and by saying we won five games five days. I get three of them top 25 teams. But – Playing good teams and progressing. You know, we hosted the national championship 11 games later in the national championship. A lot of that was predicated. You could not, in the NCAA tournament, put us in a bad position. We just played five games against some of the best teams in the country, best coaches company, and clearly one of the more hostile and home-friendly atmosphere you're going to play. So therefore, what are you going to throw us in the tournament? You couldn't throw anything at us that we hadn't seen and more. And I, and I truly believe it's a great place for that. People thought you were tired. Tired of what? I told the kids, this is a true story. All right, one, two, number three tomorrow. Some of you guys, newspaper guys are going to say to you or people, you must be tired. Well, guess what? You, your ass will be tired if I bring you back to campus and make you practice for two hours here. What a great opportunity. Here's what you're going to have. Going out, only 19,000 people there. National television, there's millions of people watching you. And you have the opportunity to have them yell and scream and love you and win games and win a championship. Why not us? A lot better than going back to stores. Shut down. It was actually during that time, it was the uh, spring break. So I, I, I think back on it. <laughs> Alternatives were easy. Stay in New York City, get great meals, play basketball. Have people yell and scream at them how great they were. Oh, wonderful. And we really thought about that. We've had days where we practice five straight. And then I'm not a guy who believes you wear a team out. The only way you wear them out, John, is and this is where we started to become so much better at the end of the season. When we were first trying to, quote, prove ourselves in the early 90s, we worked so hard to prove ourselves winning 
regular season championships, we might have not had enough, quote, gas. I never stopped what I was doing. I only took the, the, the pedal, uh, the foot off the pedal on time-wise, not intensity-wise. And so I got my teams maybe a little fresher for the tournaments. And I, and I do think there's a lot to that. You're asking about 20-year-old kids playing basketball before 19,000 people in a national audience. I mean, what's better than that? Yeah, not, not much. So nothing, nothing. Um, you know, you talk about these first names and all these coaches and being around these guys. Where would you guys go if you went out to, to dinner Big East Tournament Week? Did you, I've heard about coaches going, you know, to a hangout spot. Like, what would you guys do? Well, everybody takes a different spot. You know, there's a great line from Hamilton. I'm a big play guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the Bushnell board here. Eugene Neal Theater Board, I love theater, and I got to meet Len Manuel Miranda. But in there, wow. he's got a great saying in, in Hamilton, who lives, who dies, who tells your story. And I think if you go to Runyon's, big hangout for the Big East and media people, uh, your story might be told differently because people would see you not as a screaming guy trying to attack officials or whatever they think you're doing, but it may be a whole different kind of thing. I chose differently, and not, not just me, but pretty much me, uh, John Thompson, if you will, is probably like, more like me. That my, my family, I, I'm one of six. My wife's one of seven. Family came down. We were out to eat with them afterwards. And my point being, that's kind of who lives, who dies, who tells your story. So I, the only story told me was a, a lot of wins, and I, was, and, and, and I was a determined guy. Both those, those things are true. But I think I had other sides, which I chose to be with my family. Nothing more like that. I don't think anybody ever criticized me for that. But that's kind of thing that you do. I, I, I didn't see myself. And you know, once again, John, as you, as you and I have talked before, was a good friend, John Thompson. First met him when I was trying out for the Celtics. He was my, my bunk mate. Okay. Down in Camp Millbrook in Marshfield, Massachusetts in the summer. But point being, John, John was a man, not necessarily, had nothing to do with race, people talking. You know, John had his own friends. John had his own friends. I had my own friends. I had my family. So I, I just think the decisions you make, I mean, guys like Jimmy, PJ was single at the time, and other guys, you know, they get around more. PJ was obviously the, uh, well, the social director of all of us. And, and so I, I, I think that magical time, people don't realize that. You know, if I saw Louis, I'd I, I talk, certainly long times. So Jimmy Beheim is a, is a really good person. He really is. And, you know, he sometimes, you know, the, the guy's won 970 games. What makes obviously a very good, good person, Jim? What makes him a good person? That people, you know, well, all things he does in, in the Syracuse area. I mean, you know, the cancer survivors. We're both cancer survivors, Jimmy and I. When I first was told I had cancer, one of the first calls I made, Jimmy. And, and, and very simply, he's a good person, good man, and a really good coach. You know what he's good about? It's not very complex with Jimmy. You got to stop them, and you got to score on them. That's Jimmy. Yeah. And he found <laughs> ways to get that down with the two, three zone and stuff. And Louie would be like one of the – Great guys. I, 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 Louis Conestucker, still alive, still sharp. Um, I love Louis. You know, he said, he's, his name for me was never Jim, not coach, Irish. Hey, Irish. You know, and, and, and you go through the list of guys, Jimmy O'Brien, just a sweetheart, a guy at BC. I've known Jimmy a long, long time. He isn't like we're hugging each other. We, I'm sure, mix ups or over recruiting and all the different things, but there was a camaraderie, I can tell you, John, in that building. You look around. And, John speaks, or Lowy speaks, or PJ speaks, or Jim Bayham. I'm just saying, we all had egos, obviously. It's a matter of fact, tough fit in any kind of room with the, with the, with the 10, 11 of us. But, but, I, but I, I think there's a respect. And in that league, you better bring it respect. Respect. Respect for the league, respect for the game, and you know what most importantly? Respect for each other. That's a real big deal. And I just think that you know, and once again, I, I, I've had some people call me because they're writing books and written books. Sure. You know, someone really could do an incredible job writing a book about that time. It was almost a, you know, like uh, with Lancelot and Camelot, kind of like it was. You know, we all were knights, different looking knights on the round table with our swords fighting the battle. And yet when it was over, much like the knights would sit and share time story. And here's the most important thing, with sheer respect. I mean, John could get his kids to play at such a frenetic, tough pace. And yet their kids, 
never would say a word to the officials or anybody else. Terrific. Uh, PJ turned Seton Hall into a, a winner. Final four, probably should have won it that year. Romeo Robinson doesn't make the power shots. Not that I have a memory about those things, but, but, but no, but, but the job, how difficult of a job was that at Seton Hall? Yeah, it was. Well, you know, you come and all we had when I got there was five losing seasons in a row. So all of us had jobs. John Thompson comes to Georgetown. No one heard about basketball until John got there. We can keep on going. Generally speaking, no one took over Taj Mahal. I mean, even St. John's had up its game in a different sort of way because at that time they could invite all the St. Peter's, the Manhattans over to play them, beat them, and then go out and play who they wanted, where they wanted. But, it, it, you know, we all had to give something up in many ways about our own autonomy. But we didn't give up. And this is what Dave Garrett, I said, was so brilliant. And you had to almost be there, John, to truly understand how we preached. If you do well and you do well, guess what? You'll do well. All of us together, any fights, arguments, whatever, as best he possibly could, Dave kept that between two guys. John and I had a problem over Israeli kid we had with Dove Hennefeld and uh, Alonzo during the game. Some words were said. We had the kids talking that night. And, and, and that doesn't happen as much anymore. But, but, uh, but I, I, I do think that when you saw a game, you knew who the coach was. By the way, you probably knew who most of the players were. And, that was, uh, and this is what I dream of to some degree because I think it's magical that the Big East can, is very good now but can be as magical again. You've got some good young coaches, certainly. You've got a great coach who's certainly had the right to the Hall of Fame, Jay Wright. I mean, uh, you know, he'll get by this year and the injuries and stuff. But, but I, 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 I'm, I, the time around there, any place you walked in the city, you just walk back to your hotel or whatever, it's 10 blocks. I mean, you couldn't go more than 10 feet without people stopping you and saying things. And, I mean, it was a community of, of basketball. and I think everybody, everybody seemed to me around us, too, after a while. And I don't mean it's a negative way, but we're envious of what we were. You know, just how we were so big. We were like the best basketball league in the country. And uh, that was pretty special for us. Tell me about the, the first time you met Dan Hurley. I met Dan Hurley when he and my brother, my son, Jeff, who went up in the class M player of the year in the state. Danny was a really good player, obviously from Jersey, and they were good friends at, at Five Star. Became really good friends. And uh, then Billy Cunningham was involved in Jersey, New York City. And I always remember that my son saw dating uh, uh, Billy Cunningham's uh, daughter. And Danny and, you know, Bobby was a little, but my point being is, yeah, Danny's a very determined guy. I, I, he, he's done a good job coaching us. No question about that. I tell you, in my opinion, this is just me, but, you know, it's not hard to recruit to UConn in some ways. You look up and you start seeing the names and the Kimbers and now playing the NBA. But it, and he's done a great job. <clears throat> people say it, it's not hard. It's very hard. Any recruiting is hard because the other people have things to offer too. I think the big thing we have, you come to a brand name. You know, right now is as big as it has been, of course not. But once again, I think that his work, his determination will help uh, bring that back. I think that uh, uh, the whole thing is to just be a, uh, a good time for him. He can take the team into the national limelight again. And, 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 and no question, he's a very good coach. They really play incredibly hard. Uh, and, 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 and yet, at the end of the season, they're probably going to have four to five guys leave. The most important is one of them, <laughs> the best player, <laughs> who, who, who is the best player in the league. I didn't say he's the whole best player of the year. I said he's the best player in the league. But, I, but, but I, I mean, again, he's done a very good job. I, 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 you know, I've, I've told him, a couple, we talk enough, uh, that you're taking over something that's kind of broken a little bit. And, but you know what? If something doesn't exist, you can't fix it. you got to rebuild it. No one has to rebuild UConn from when they play at the XL Center downtown and 15,000 people pack the place. You know, if they only get 12 or 13, it's a bad crowd. I think everybody would like to have those problems. And, and, and same thing on campus. You know, we went like I think 16 years on campus with almost 10,000 seats, never have it not sold out. So we, when you can take that over, and, and it's a hard job, and rebuild it. I mean, he certainly got the, the first thing he started with was getting a good staff. He's got uh, Tommy Moore, one of my guys, certainly. Got Talit Brown, our former point guard, and Kevin Freeman's got some good people there. 
And then you look around the building, see the pitches and the players, and it's a pretty good place to start. And I don't think everything I can guess, see, know, feel about Dan. He doesn't take a lot of days off. He, that's what he does. He's a basketball coach, and he's dedicated himself into making this the best uh, uh, team possible. And eventually, uh, as it is now, it's his program. But eventually, he'll, his uh, brand uh, with the history of the school will be on it. Uh, what's the loudest you've ever heard a UConn home game? Great question. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. There's been a lot, of, a lot of that you couldn't even hear yourself think. I still remember the first game against St. John's, you know, in, 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 in the uh, 99, January of 91, fifth, sixth, whatever the date was. Because people had been great basketball fans for 50 years, Yankee Conference, all that back, and they loved their basketball. When that building opened, it was like the reaffirmation of we can be special. And to bring a great St. John with Louie and um, Malik Sidney, God rest his soul, and Wadam and the guys they had play that night, and we ended up beating them by 12 14 in our first game at home. I, I was the loudest, but it was probably the most emotional. I, would, I, I, I had people who had been coming there for many, many years who are unfortunately aren't here anymore that night in 99. Would never ever forget. It was it was like all their dreams coming true. We're a big time player playing a big time uh, university in St. John's basketball wise against Louis Kanaseka on national television. How this all happened, and I think that the fact it did happen it was really really special. How should the 2011 run be remembered? Magical. I, I've heard Danny and Miracles at Kansas and some of the other things. Am I cynical a little bit? Yeah, because the five days before it, <laughs> the five games, five days before it, to go with the next six, 11 straight games. And any time you lost, didn't make a shot, missed a foul shot, whatever the case may be, you are going home. 11 times we did. Tell me how many times you've ever seen that in college sport and led by a guy, the, the velvet sword. He'd cut you, but you wouldn't feel it because you'd be smiling the whole time. Special, special guy. And, and, and special young team. People forget. They said, the back court that good? Well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy Lamb's averaging 14 points a game with the Pacers, by the way. Shabazz is in the, now the Puerto Rican national team, but a 70-year pro. And Kimber Walker's an all-star. So I, I, I think that's a pretty good back court. I, matter of fact, I, you and I both know it's a terrific back court. And I just think that – and then we have a kid, Al Toriaki, 6'10", uh, we had uh, one of the leading rebounds in the country, Roscoe Smith. We had really good. Uh, uh, Giffy, who's now a big star over in Germany, we were really good. And, and, and I don't know if people realize when they broke that team down, when you get like seven or eight of the guys, four, four that go into the NBA, four or five go over Europe and play making money in basketball. You know, if you have a Kimball Walker, it's really good. If you have a Shabazz neighbor who later would become a first team All American, you're pretty good. If you have a a large selection in the draft like Jeremy Lamb. Holy, yeah. Any one of those individually, like Book Knight this year, are great. Uh, by the way, we had three of them. And then we had a front court of guys who were just on the edge of playing in the NBA. So I, I you know, I, uh, but, but it was the more we won, the more we believed. And by the time we faced, I still see the Butler game. It's 19, 18 and a half time. We can't do a thing. And then I say, I don't think we're going to score a lot, but let's hold them scoreless. Well, let's make a possibility the next game. We end up blocking or bothering some ridiculous figure. We blocked like nine shots in the second half. And then I think we bothered ridiculous, like 14 shots. And so my point, and I've talked to Brad about this, Brad Stevens, the coach at Butler at the time, so we couldn't get a shot off. And that's all we did. We just said, we'll get our points, don't worry. We're good enough. We'll go by them. And that second half, I mean, they shot something like 19% in the second half. They couldn't get a shot off. We just... You know, we knew how we got to win. We played Kentucky a couple nights before then, a game which is a little misleading. They scored four, five points at the end, which really didn't count. We won the game. But we, we kind of got into a faster pace game in the seconds. This game was, was in the 30s late, and everybody says bad basketball. What's one way to interpret it? I would think the best defense a team of mine under those circumstances has ever played. Will you watch the Big East tournament from home this week? I haven't got my tickets yet. Um, 
So, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I will watch it for sure. I will watch it for sure. And I'll be uh, following teams and people and things. It's just, uh, as I said to each guy, each guy who's going to play, or each fan who's lucky to get there, watch this. This is a, uh, it's a memory book. This is going to the scrapbook. For, I'm telling you, Biggie's tournament is, is that special. And the few fans in there of being around the city, it's not like going way up to Syracuse, the Camelta Stores, Connecticut. This is Madison Square Garden, so it's going to be a very special time. And all the players should really uh, give it their very, very best because there's a lot of memories up there. Jim Calhoun, thank you for the generous amount of time today. It's been absolutely fantastic. I love doing this with you, and I can sense the love you have for this league and your Connecticut Huskies, and they will be – in action, Thursday, 9 Eastern time, potentially, potentially with the Providence Friars. And we know there's some layers to that, Jim. There certainly are. And I'll be watching. Thanks, John. Really appreciate it. Really enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs>